Hey James, I thought you said you weren't going to get another gauntlet Gen 2. Well, you're right, but this isn't just any Gen 2. This is Umarex Gauntlet Gen 2 in 30 cal. This is a whole nother animal. It's not like the past ones. As you know, I could not stand the 22 caliber. It, it was just unacceptable the way it was. This one, they had to redesign the rifle for the 30 caliber barrel, receiver, and everything. Hey everybody, welcome back. James here again with you. And today, I'm gonna be sharing with you my experience out of the box with this Umarex Gauntlet Gen 2 30 caliber. This is the first big bore that Umarex has made in the Gauntlet platform. And they, I would say, decently knocked it out of the park. I do have some gripes about it, but I'll let you know those soon. But other than that, this thing is a dream to shoot, no joke. Compared to the 22 that I had, the fit and finish and everything, this gun is a totally different gun. Uh, I could not believe how much I really like this gun. And it's just, it's a totally different gun compared to the 22 Gen 2 that I had. Uh, the actual receiver is all one piece. It doesn't have the top adapter with the dovetail underneath. It's all one piece with the dovetail and Picatinny milled in it. And as you know, my concerns about the 22, the barrel had the transfer port drilled inside the rifling. Well, this barrel, I took it out and checked before I even shot. I went through all my preliminary checks and the transfer port is drilled outside of the rifling. No concerns there. So that was a positive. I really like that. Now with this being a 30 caliber, you're not going to get that many shots compared to the other calibers in the gauntlet platform. They claim to get about 25 shots or so. The magazines themselves are seven rounds and you get two with one single shot tray. So you almost get about four magazines is what they claim and I can see that. I filled it all the way up to 4500 PSI which that's what this bottle is set for. and. I don't know 100% what the regulator is set at. They claim 28 or 2900 PSI. I just don't shoot it below that. But I can tell you for a fact that this thing, again, shoots like a dream. Uh, a night and day difference. I cannot complain. Again, I could not stand the 22 caliber. It was just unbearable to me on how bad it was. Now, with that said, you still get the same features as the original Gauntlet Gen 2, you get the barrel band, get the shroud, get the adjustable cheek piece, and the butt plate here. But other than that, it's 30 caliber, and it's going to be putting out a lot of energy at the muzzle. Uh, they claim about 1,000 feet per second with the 44.8 grain and the 975 feet a second with the 50.2 grain. And in my testing, I have surpassed those results. So this thing is putting out over 100 foot-pounds easily with those pellet grain weights. And with that said, the bolt is silky smooth compared to the 22 I had. And also, the trigger is pretty much like just any other gauntlet trigger that works. It's not all grimy and crunchy. I really liked it. And as you could tell, it really helped in my shooting. So now I'm going to show you out of the box results with this at 50 yards shooting the 44.8 grain JSB pellets. No barrel cleaning, just set the scope on it and shot three rounds after I got it bore sighted with this is the new One Leaf Rapid Fire Plus 12 power scope for the One Leaf attachment camera. And this thing is a crystal fine reticle, and I really like the scope, so I slapped it on here and check it out.
Four point eight grain. So you guys seen even out of the box, this thing is shooting the forty four point eight grain really, and I mean really good, uh, almost one holing. They're literally a sub half inch group at fifty yards. Now the other pellets didn't do so hot. The fifty point two grain and the polymag forty four point eight grain. They were about two inch groups, not, not that great. But here's the thing, this is where this gun comes in that's different than the other Gen 2s. Get this, it has an adjustable hammer spring. So again, I really, you know, I'm kind of like really falling in love with this out of the box because they listened to the air gunners and actually incorporated a lot of the stuff that we found with the Gen 2 into the 30 cal. But I just don't understand why they couldn't do it with the 22 and the 25. Now, with that said, I didn't touch the hammer spring and I wanted to get the 50.2 grain JSBs to shoot good. So as you can see from the shooting video, I moved my scope back and then shot again. Check this out. go 50.2 grain one. so as you've seen those pellets as long as i do my part and not pull even though this does have just a hair more recoil than a 22 caliber air gun it definitely definitely is very very accurate and precise now, all I got to do is just move my crosshair over on my target. I just wanted to see how well this gun would perform before I have to start adjusting my scope all over the place. 
And I thought I would share this with you guys because again, this gun has really got me excited. And with a huge bottle on it, again, you have to have a big bottle for this big of a bore. Now, here's some things I really wish they would have done with this. I understand it's the gauntlet platform, but they need to come out with the slide lever PCP like the Avenger. This has got a regulator on it. Why can't they do it? That's my thing. As much as I like the gauntlets, you guys know I love the first gauntlet. Why can't they, if they were going to redo it anyway, why couldn't they take it a step further? Now, here's another thing that really kind of gets me, and I don't understand it. All the other gauntlets have some type of baffling system to quieten the bark. This one does not. It has a thread protector with a half by 20 thread so you can put your own on there and it is not very backyard friendly so all the other gauntlets have some type of suppression to help you quieten the bark and there's nothing in there but the long 28 inch barrel guys so I'm not too excited about that Especially since this rifle is $4.99 on Umarex's website, in which that's what I paid for it. Because everywhere else is out of stock, and they're on hold until November, according to everywhere else that I looked. But I thought this would be an interesting video to share with you, to see if it's even worth your time. And I'm kind of glad I did it, because again, it shoots lights out compared to the other Gen 2 that I had, the 22. Uh, but again, it's a 30 caliber and they had to redesign some of this to get it to work. And that's why, I, that's why I'm saying that they could have just taken it a step further and made it into a side lever gun. But I am excited that they did fix the issues with the gun that I noticed. And again, it is really accurate and precise out of the box no complaints in that department as you could tell and they incorporated a hammer spring so that gives you the ability to tune in to any pellet at any velocity you want so i'm really happy with that you can turn it down or turn it up i just left it the way it was out of the box and again all the pellets that i shot today were over a thousand feet a second putting out about rimfire foot pounds of energy 22 rimfire foot pounds of energy at the muzzle and I can't complain so everybody if you're in the market for a 30 caliber air gun I definitely recommend this one again I just wish they you know would have followed through and you know put some baffling in here and all this and that but I get it you have to cut cost when you sit there and have to re redesign something but at the same time all the other gauntlet platforms had it that's what i don't get now it is still super bulky and weighs a lot but i'm used to that because i really enjoyed the gauntlet one but if that's the only thing that's what's causing you not to get this the 30 caliber itself being a big bore i could not believe just how accurate and precise this gun was and no fuss now i did have a little bit of an issue with this at first I will say this, it didn't want to air up. I heard air hissing and I thought, oh God, you got to be kidding me. Why? What's going on here? Well, come to find out, I took the bottle off to see what was happening, took the bottle out and I didn't know if maybe, you know, it was a fitting loose or what. The actual degassing screw was tightened, which was right here and took the bottle and tightened it all the way with the air out of it as far as I could get it and aired it up and it sealed up. Now the problem with that was with the shroud on, the actual fill gauge, which you can see here, was inside the shroud. I had to take the shroud off and leave it off to tighten the actual bottle all the way on. And then to put the shroud back on, I had to loosen the bottle a little bit, about probably half a turn with the pressure in it to get it to fit back on and screw it back on. So that was an issue that I had at first, but luckily it wasn't nothing major and it got me going once I found out where it was leaking at, all because the bottle wasn't screwed in all the way. And when you air it up for the first time, make sure that the 
actual hammer is cocked so the valve is not ble bleeding out. But other than that, I have no complaints. Uh, again, I really like this for what it is. So anyways, guys, if you're in the market for a 30 cal, definitely check out the G2. I appreciate you watching as always, and I hope you got something from this video. I'll see you on the next one.